Hey everybody, this is the Hey You video game podcast, and I'm Lemon Smith. It's old gimmick here. And this is Verindy Puppet. And we're so happy to be with you guys today. How you two doing? You guys doing all right? No. I've been pretty sad lately, actually. Really? Just melancholy? Yeah, just kind of that slow burn of sadness, you know, that modern life brings. Oh, wow. Bummer. Puppet, are you, are you sad too? I had a bad day. <laughs> I had a bad day. Oh, man. Bummer. I actually had a bad day. Well, I had a good day until like 20 minutes ago and I stepped on a piece of glass. And Oh, uh, my well, gosh. Mercy. It, it's still in my foot, unfortunately. I like rushed over here to do this and I can't see it. So it's 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 bad. My wife tried to pull it wow. out and then it it's like literally just like lodged up in my like the top of my foot and it's in there. Lots of blood. A lot of blood. But it's just sounds like, like a like, real problem. Yeah, it is a real problem. It like kind of hurts when I put my weight on it. Well, thank you for prioritizing the podcast. I think Wow, you know that's a real sacrifice. You've yeah. got a you've got a a minor medical emergency on your hands right now. And I you're... literally kicked my wife out of the house because it needed to be quiet, and then just was like I can do this. I'm a soldier. I'm a real hero. You know. Wow. So. You're my hero. Thanks, yeah, guys. Absolutely. All right, I've got the GTA 5 Wikipedia pulled up. I'll start oh, reading gosh. here in a second, oh, no. and I don't want any interruptions. Puppets giving away Ooh. what this episode's all about. GTA Grand Theft Auto. Do you guys remember playing the very first Grand Theft Auto? Like the like the top-down view one where you had to like swing around. Wasn't that GTA 2? Was that GTA 2? I think you're right. Yeah, yeah. That's why I was looking this up. I was trying to figure out because I remember playing the top down. Yeah, I don't, it, I don't even awesome. remember the first one, but the top down in GTA 2 was super fun. You just kind of like get yourself into a corner, get some cop cars to get around you, shoot them all, and then you just try to make this massive explosion. It was a blast. I really a blast. enjoyed it. It was. I never played that one. Never played that one. I remember when GTA three came out. Okay. It was uh That's it was the like one a big deal. A big deal. That's the one. I remember oh, talking yeah. about it in PE class. Everybody yep. was raging. If your parents allowed you to buy it, it was just mind blowing. Wait a second. Was GTA three three D or top down? Three D PS two. Oh no, no, okay. It was so the Vice GTA City one, wasn't it? 2. No, Vice City GTA was after was GTA Oh, three. right. Oh, yeah. This is the one with that really ghetto like plane that you could fly at the end of the game. Right? Remember that? Just me? Mm, no. Nah, I don't know. Really I didn't... Any super specific memories. <laughs> yeah, super specific. No, GTA 3 was like the... Uh, I don't know if it was New York City, but it was it was a city like that. Whereas Vice City was like Miami. But the one that we started playing was... Uh, GTA 2. That was the one you and me and a few yeah. other guys started playing with the top down, and that was so fun. I don't know, I don't know what it was, but that thing was, it was sweet. It was just getting those stars and then trying to get away and just racking up kills. But that was a thing when GTA 3 came out. Remember, like, because it did GTA 3 have prostitutes? Was oh yeah. That? Yeah, and you could like, gun down people like you couldn't. So there's kind of like this moral dilemma where it was just like, oh, I wonder if my parents will let me, you know, play this game. Yeah, because it was like the first 3D. It was 3D, so it was like, oh, 3D prostitutes. Uh. We don't know about those, even though Duke Nukem had been doing it for a while. Yeah. I remember yeah. I was my uncle gave us Duke Nukem, and I played it. Until my mom saw like the the strippers like dancing around the poles, but I was like, "Mom, they're not real strippers; they're monsters." Because if you did something, they all turned into monsters, and you'd have to kill them, which really didn't aid uh, <laughs> my case. I can't imagine why. Yeah, can't yeah, imagine those, uh, why those tasseled titties were. Uh, I'm sure important 
image for many young men. <laughs> in, in that super old, I don't even know what you call those graphics. Just bad, just old, bad graphics. Yep. Old and bad. Old and bad. The way we played uh, Grand Theft Auto, because I had two brothers, was especially when Vice City came out, is you had to take turns, right? And so you would play until you died. And so we'd just get on a motorcycle and you'd cruise around and do a bunch of jumps and get in some trouble. And then eventually, once the cops got you, you'd have to hand the controller over. But then it just turned out that my brothers and I would just play real leisurely games where we just kind of slowly drive around town you know do a couple jumps don't get in any trouble yeah i remember doing that in gta 2 just kind of like cruising i enjoyed just like playing it safe you know what game i came up before granted if i was for the original playstation do you guys did you guys play driver no no tell us about it Oh, Driver, man. That was the game. It was it was like GTA 3, except with the worst graphics ever. I mean, that's all there is to really say. Yeah, but literally same thing. Go around the streets, do missions, shoot people, yeah, drive. Yeah. No, you nailed it. Crushed it. Well, apparently Driver didn't do that well because there's no Driver 5. Well, that's what I was just looking at, actually. There's Driver, Driver 2, Driver 3, Driver Parallel Lines, Are you Driver serious? 76, Driver San Francisco, Driver Renegade 3D. Oh, my which gosh. Which tells me that this must be a pretty old series. And then there's Driver Speedboat Paradise. I'm guessing that's when the franchise started <laughs> yeah. kind of going downhill. Who sees Driver Speedboat Paradise and is like, I must play that? Like it was a Steam yeah. sale, and they're like, Oh, this is totally worth ten bucks. Those speedboats. Some some gaming executives were sitting at a round table one day, and somebody said, "What do you guys think about speedboats?" <laughs> and some guy paints this beautiful picture of a speedboat game, and he's like, "And we'll call it Speedboat Paradise." Yeah, Driver, the original, it's 1999. That's, uh, that's pretty that's old. old. Wow, gimmick. Yeah. You're an old man. You're aging. Yeah. Yeah. You should... Hey, man. I mean, I mean, if I was born in 1999, I would only be like 17 or 18. Yeah, that's true. But you weren't. You I it. was. No. And I did. And I mm. was and I did. I don't know what I did. Mm -mm. Mm -mm 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 -mm. What do you think um, the Grand Theft Auto um, franchise has played on your moral character? Because, you know, you guys have played this game and it is so violent and there's just so much immorality. How do you think it's shaped who you are today? I mean, it's definitely made me into a bad person. Oh no. Are you serious? Oh yeah, I'm a, I'm a monster. I'm a monster. You guys drive around town running people over. That's right. That's right. But you know the real GTA, I think the one we're talking about most is old GTA five. I don't think I don't think that's disputable, you know? A game... How? When did GTA Five come out? Five years 2013. ago? 2013. Four years ago. But it's here's, still... It's still good. Still good. It's all, I think it's even like... The online is even more popular than it was when it first came out, I feel like. You know when Speedboat Paradise came out? No. 2014. Oh, contender. Wow. Even more cutting edge. Speedboat Paradise. We're going to have to review that son of a gun later. Yeah, free to play on a smartphone. But here's, I, I've been enjoying the Grand Theft Auto 5 online, but do you think it's a little too chaotic? Because sometimes it feels a little bit mindless. Like you're driving around, you're shooting people, people are shooting you, you know, it just kind of goes back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. And then it's low stakes. It's there's low stakes. There's nothing to lose. So there, there's nothing to lose. So everybody's going all out. 
You know, I think well, the old ones, that, you know, there was some kind I mean, of that's stakes, That's super right? not true. That's not, that's not true at all. <laughs> it's I don't know. I think if, you're, if, you're, if you're just wandering around the lobby. What but, are the penalties for dying? If you have money on it's you, not, you it's not debt. It. So there's missions. So in the uh, in the um, CEO and the biker club updates, you can own a clubhouse and a biker club, and you go and like the gun running and stuff. You can get. You have to do them in the lobby where everybody is, and you have to get. A, you can do it alone, but it's always better to get a crew together. And it takes. Takes a you you get a mission and you g- grab supplies you bring them back to your say it's like a meth lab and you bring the raw materials back to your meth lab and then if your supply meter is filled then you can slowly or if your uh, yeah if your supply meter is filled you'll slowly make product um, but you have to supply it and you have to actually go get these supplies but when you get the supplies you show up on on the map for everybody to see and if you get killed and those supplies get destroyed you lose those supplies and like you you have to completely redo everything which makes it super fun the other night i was playing and some other guys were running their meth or whatever and it showed up on the map so like i just came out of nowhere i I really don't think that anybody was thought you know none of them thought they were being attacked and just zoomed up behind them and killed two of their guys right off the bat and like messed up their mission the other guys ended up getting me, but it it was just kind of a fun back and forth, and it totally ruined their run. But how many people actually have a meth lab and are running those kind of missions where there's some actually something at stake? I feel like most tons, people are, tons think, of people. That's how you get most money. People, most people are probably just logging in, grabbing a car, running around looking for chaos. No, 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 no. no. That this game would not be popular if it was just like the reason those people like the people that cause the most chaos are the people with suppressors. And that is an extremely expensive. Oh, the thing people who cause the most chaos motorcycle. are the ones with hacks. Well, it's true. Yeah, obviously. I think you need to. Uh, uh, GTA Five Online is more akin to an MMO than it is some other. You can't compare it to like a shooter, or even like past GTAs. It, it, it's like in an MMO. You, like most MMOs, even really good ones. Of course, we're big fans of the ones where, you know, there's a lot to lose, but. There's tons of MMOs that are still amazing, but you don't lose anything when you die. It's just you lose a potential XP. Uh, if you were fighting over something, now that person you know gets it or or whatever the case. And it's exactly the same in GTA Five. You have to compare it to like an MMO. Yeah, yeah I guess. I mean, I feel like there was never much at stake, but uh, maybe there. Maybe there, there there's there. what's at stake is that you don't get the much like. To, to do anything in this game, you need money. You need a ton of money. And to buy a clubhouse or a warehouse or whatever, you need money to, to do that. And if you're continually being interrupted, they're interrupting your chance to progress, just like in yeah. an MMO. Well, so, yeah. so that's what you have I've to do. I've always lose. thought, yeah, the interruption mechanic has been in place in a lot of MMOs like you know, World of Warcraft, you're, in the, you're, you're trying to do something, you get killed, you get thrown back to your, I don't even remember, Bindstone, or where, where do you respawn in World of Warcraft? But that angel. I feel like the it's interruption, angel, like when all you lose is a little bit of time, then it's, to me, it doesn't feel high stakes, it doesn't feel intense unless I'm dropping. Like for a while there, I thought, oh, I'm going to drop a bunch of money. But then I started dying and I was like, oh, I'm not really dropping that much. No, but I mean, this game isn't trying to be like a hardcore like game. It's this it's GTA. It's like yeah. uh, it's extremely intense as far as like gunfights and heists and the sheer amount of options that you have to get into firefights extremely intense and the heist you know you you die hard and you, and you have to start over and and you can play everything on easy mode if you want but th- that's not the point like you you want to actually achieve these things you kind of have to make your own goals but uh I, yeah i i think uh I, I don't think it's fair to say this is like a low stakes game and that's that it loses points for that it's not trying oh to no be... not at all no no not at all i was just saying that like as an observation like that's how it felt to me that it was 
low stakes. It's kind of it kind of feels like a non-zero sum game. So like when you die, I I feel like somebody else isn't going to get a bunch of stuff from you. But maybe I'm wrong. And maybe it kind of depends on enough. how you play the game because you can just make it complete arcade chaos, just killing people and not much really happens or you can do the heists and and progress or do the drug running and there's consequences i mean a lot of the consequences are yeah it sets you back in, in time but that's like every game yeah and it has an old school feel to it like when you're trying to complete a mission with your like with a group the missions are hard and it's easy to get picked off and like oh i got to restart again and it kind of makes it feel like beating an old nintendo boss or something like you have to like figure really figure out how to do it and you die a lot which is cool and the setback does become a penalty and the heists are cool too because you have the different roles so you've got like one person who pilots you have another two players who have to like break into the jail you have another two players who have to drive the vehicle from one location to the next and they're all like interconnected so you're counting on each person to fulfill their role but I feel like that element kind of spices it up a little bit more than just, you know, we're all in a van and we're driving to kill these people, which are some yeah. nice, but there's, I, I like how there's specific roles in quite a few of them. It does a great job at spicing up the sandbox experience. Well, it is called Grand Theft Spicy Auto 5. And mm -hmm. so they were really trying to make it extra spicy. And so they, that's some of the things that they offered. Yeah, they're going to have a, a Sicily expansion, actually. There's really? going to be a Sicily expansion. Yeah, it's going to be called uh, GTA, the spicy meatball. <laughs> That's what I heard. I heard the same thing. <laughs> the spicy meatball. So it's going gonna, it's gonna to be in Sicily? And what is the spicy meatball? Is that like it's some element of the plot? I'm assuming. Oh, no, it's a metaphor. Oh, Oh really? Yeah, the spicy meatball, it's it's a metaphor. Okay. That makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. I just love in GTA you can dress up however you want to. And That's GTA the 5, real the real got, the real reason to play. You've got masks, you've got different clothes to wear. It's like walking into a Macy's or a Mervin's and you've got a gift card and you're just swiping it. You know, you're getting the exact pants and shirt and socks that you want. Oh, it's that's pretty good. Well, yeah, I mean, hey, that's why I play it. Just to look really good. Real ridiculous. Absolutely. 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 You can do whatever you want in that game, and that's what I love. Like, it, you could just sit there and try on different outfits for for a while. You can like check out different guns, and there's so many different things you can do. I'm not even aware of most of them, obviously, based on like uh, how Gimmick corrected me earlier about you know high stakes missions and owning like meth labs and all that stuff. Yeah, I mean that's the real crux of the game right now uh i mean these these uh you can be a ceo you can buy like a business and then you like kind of have like the, are you still cars or you no uh, there's like a document forgery business you can have there's drug running there's gun running there's uh there's all kinds of stuff and i think that's what most people are doing right now there's um the gun running is kind of the new big one you buy this bunker and these this giant mobile base you can put turrets on it and all that stuff and but to get all that stuff to get upper grades you need need money so you can do that or you can just go into straight up like to make money in xp just go straight up into like uh death matches or different game modes it's just like it's so many different games in one game and i think uh, i think the but the main i think the main strength of the game right now are these dr drug running, gun running uh, things to building up your base, getting the money, slowly upgrading it, um, all that business. It, it definitely has these this uh, MMORPG vibe to it. And I think GTA 6, you know, in 56 years when it comes out, you know, there's no reason for him to even think about making a new one right now because it's still so popular. 
I think we're going to get an act like a, I think it's going to be legitly considered an MMO. Like I uh, agree uh, completely with you, especially because in GTA five, they added um, like the stats on your character and it's only like six or seven of them and they're pretty basic. You know, it's like uh, stamina and intelligence. I don't, I don't remember what the six are, but they're real basic things that, you know, allow you to shoot your gun better or run faster and stuff. But I could totally see GTA 6 turning into an actual MMO and they just really flesh out um, being able to create different kind of characters. Like everybody's able to shoot guns, but maybe there'll be different types of uh, like uh, gun use. Like you have to progress your sniper or your pistols or, um, or even driving and, and things like that, which could make it really interesting having different kinds of characters. Yeah, for sure. Does it feel like an MMO when you're playing it now? It does. It it feels like an MMO, but uh, the the thing, the reason that I wouldn't say it's like a full one is it feels like an MMO for like a month, and then you realize, like, you've you're kind of you've seen what there's to see. You still may have a long way to go, but but you know exactly what it is. Whereas other MMOs, you know keep unfolding as you level up you're not really like you do level up in this game but the leveling system isn't quite the same there there's uh it's i mean it's gta it's straight up gta so this is never going to be an mmo in the classic sense like uh you know with a big open world and thousand man servers and you're doing quests and getting armor you know that's not I, i wouldn't be surprised if they open it up to bigger servers and whatnot but I don't know. At some point, it's just it doesn't have quite as big of a lifespan, but it has a huge uh, like comeback rate. Like you know, coming back. Like you, you come back to it every now and then, and it's super fun. Or they release an update, and you come back to it. Although I guess that's how a lot of people play MMORPGs as well. So I, I think know. there's a lot of uh, I think there's a lot of potential in GTA Six for some interesting sword play. Hey, there you go. They do have melee weapons. Just a lot of swords. There's just people running through the streets of whatever big city they choose with swords. Full plate armor. Oh my god! Bastard swords. That that could be ridiculous. Or they turn GTA 6 over into uh, the new VR systems that they have. And there's just people running around their houses pretending to shoot their fingers at things and swinging their fists. It would be actually be a huge workout. It Indeed, pro- it would. It wouldn't Indeed be fun at all, probably. But I mean, it's something they could do. It is indeed. It is indeed. I think. Uh, I think, although all that stuff I just said, I think the heists are probably still the most fun, though. Oh, hands down, they're, they're a blast. They're the right kind of difficulty too. Like what uh, Verindy Puppet was saying earlier you kind of have to figure them out like very rarely do you beat them on the very first time you have to play through them almost a couple times to really get the hang of it yeah i mean you really want to play them on hard too i mean hard is you have to play all the stuff like that on hard otherwise you know it it, it there's a weak no point you're just unless it's just you're playing because you want to see the content but The worst is, though, the hackers in this game. Holy cow. How have they not, like, figured that out? I'll be, like, running around the game, and all of a sudden, like, a giant cage will, like, drop on me. And I'm stuck in a cage, like, I'm in the zoo, and there's nothing that I can do. And it's just some hacker just... Who's there traveling. are there are those benevolent hackers, and then there's the malevolent hackers. Sometimes you'll just be minding your own business, and you're just getting a bunch of money put in your bank oh, every yeah. now and then. Which, which actually, you know, it's great. You're never complaining, but at the same time, for the long run of the game, you don't really want free stuff because that breaks short, the, game. the lifespan of the game. It makes you get what you want earlier. But uh, the reason is. This game is super moddable. Like, they encourage mods. Like, there's so much user-created content. There's so many games that have been made out of this game. And the problem is, the programs that they use to do those mods are the same programs that hackers use. 
And so uh, Rockstar actually, or Rockstar's parent company, I think it was, got a lot of flack because they recently just banned, they banned those program or one of the big programs that they use for that, they banned them. And the, the legit modding community that makes a lot of these custom maps got really pissed off because it's hurting like the modding community, which is one of the big reasons why GTA 5 is still so huge. But at the same time, it's like, well, like, just hacking is such a problem. It's so it seems so easy yeah. uh, in this game. So I don't know. It's a kind of a predicament. I mean, what's you uh, want this game to be what's, moddable? What's Rockstar's incentive for cutting out the hackers? They're they're already their player base is huge. Is it really going to? They want to sell. Like, is uh, that going to be a big? PR point for them, like to announce we got rid of all the hackers, and then everybody starts playing. I feel like, well, this is sort of, of a the audience game, and they want people to buy money from them, but instead they're just getting it from hackers. That's yeah, the but, truth of it. Because of the audience of Grand Theft Auto, you have so many console people playing and stuff. It's not like a highly competitive audience, so the hacks are kind of like, eh, okay, like. I don't think they're going to gain a ton of players by cutting out the hacking. Um, but yeah, maybe I didn't know they sell money. Maybe they'll maybe maybe they wait. Would they sell money in this game that way. But I mean, yeah. for the overall franchise, I don't think the hacking is hurting the overall franchise because more competitive players probably wouldn't be drawn to this format anyway. Because it's such a fun, casual sandbox game, you know, like. You hop into these storylines, you have a good time, you enjoy the storylines. Maybe you get really into it for a little while, but you're mainly just invested in your companies and your, you know, your meth labs and stuff like that, running guns. But it's not like a highly competitive game. It's just more a fun sandbox. So the hacks just kind of make it like give it a little Gary's mod feel. Yeah, and there's there's another the it, it's in most in most games or or all games whatever i mean hacking is almost exclusively just game ruining but one of the one of the thi- like everything is so expensive like if a if a patch comes out that adds a certain element to this game uh, gun running or uh, the the motorcycle club it's millions of dollars to even open that content and then you open the content and you can't do anything. You have to spend more millions of dollars to even to like get to the point where you can actually start making money. And it's a clear, it's a clear tactic to get people to buy. They're called shark cards. Yeah. To just buy money. And so it, on one hand, it's kind of, I, I, I kind of like enjoy the fact that they're clearly trying to like get you to like i it would take me a month to get this much money legit to open this content and they're clearly trying to get people to be like well i'll spend 20 bucks and just get some money whatever but you know wait did you spend some money hack- gimmick i i, <laughs> you I spent spent some some money. <laughs> oh how much money did you spend uh, oh, I didn't. I probably. I think it was like twenty bucks or something. Oh man! Um, and I got probably just the same amount of money for free from a hacker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But but uh, I mean that. Uh, yeah. That's, that's why people. That's why I think a lot of people don't even mind. Like when hackers start giving them money, it's kind of like yeah, like well, fuck you, rock star. Like uh, you like given that they're releasing these content patches for free and they could be charging, but even if they were charging. Any people, anybody who's been playing PC games for long enough remembers the days when you didn't get ripped off every time a patch came out and right. you just call call it a DLC and charge for it. It's the same so, exact model as like the new, you know, uh, phone games where you start playing them and then you progress to a certain point and then it just takes so freaking long for your city to be built or for the next upgrade. Or you can pay fifty cents and it'll take, you know. 30 seconds yeah it's just like it's a money paradise it's like speedboat paradise it's the exact same model i need could you just off of the photos describe what speedboat paradise really is like is this a racing game i'm I'm not looking at any photos right now i could i could pull them up i guess well i'm just i'm just really curious at this point partly what it was 
There's speed boats in GTA 5. They're not really that fun, though, because the waves are too big, and so you just kind of splash around in the water. It's okay. Yeah, I'm looking at video, or I'm looking at Google images right now, and all I'm seeing is, I mean, it's really hard to tell. It looks a lot like a racing game, I think. Uh, There is an image here that says, is driver speedboat paradise sexiest so i don't know maybe that's just a random image that came up here on google so it's the sexiest speedboat game ever yeah maybe it's a sexy sexy game Ooh, sexy speedboats that's the next expansion sexy speedboat paradise it's actually a uh, reality show on tv they bring in a real good looking people to ride speed boats and and make out with each other. And then yeah. they kick one person off each week. Yeah. No. But I, I think you. I think GTA. The hackers aren't a big deal because the game is just for funsies. Right? It's just, it's for, just funsies. for funsies. That's I, what you know GTA what? I, agree, 5 I is. agree with you, Verindy. It's it's That's just its a strength. Funsy That's game. why that's why it's a good land party game. You know, you, you're just goofing and you're making, you know, you're putting on silly outfits and you're, you have a lot of freedom on what you want to do. You want to play parachute games, play parachute games. You want to race, you want to run drugs. And there's still a little bit for the more hardcore gamer out there. You know, somebody who wants to get into the whole gun running thing. I thought the gun running was really fun and it seemed like a kind of hardcore element. I liked that. But you're right. You could just jump in it right from the start and it's like low commitment because there's some games out there. You just know that if you fire it up, like you're, you're, you're saying something, you're saying you're going to dedicate some time to this game where GTA five, you could just jump on play for 30 minutes, an hour, have a really good time and not feel bad if you don't touch it for a week or so. Where you just can't do that in really almost any MMORPG yeah. or, or any actual story-based game. Although, most MMOs, you get in, you create your character, and you get the profound sense that you are nothing. And you have a long way to go. Whereas GTA V, eh, you're, you're there. You know, you're not. You're just you a person. You got stuff to do. You got stuff to do. You got a family to feed. You know, but yeah. I mean, they they got food in the cupboard. You know, they don't need you to come home. You're just fussing around, you know. Yeah, it's a fussy game. Which brings me to my greatest complaint about the game is that I think the console feeling like movement just it just feels so mushy to me. Running around, trying to take cover getting stuck on walls, the whole thing just feels just like a clunky, mushy fuss for me, uh, coming from being a PC gamer. Uh, that was the, that was the hardest thing for me. I just could not get the hang of the movement. Like it was too slow or like what? I, cause I feel yeah, like the movement you, was pretty good. You, ru- you run slow, you turn wide. Like when you're on foot, oh, yeah. like you, you turn. It's, it's a wide. Yeah, it's a wide turn. And yeah, you run slow and I would take cover and it would, I'm not used to games where you take cover, but it it would put me at the wrong part. Like it would put me on the wrong side of the corner or something like that. And I was just, I, I did not like that. The driving feels amazing though. Yeah, I could see that. It was not, it's not precise uh, movement when you're on foot by any means. Even yeah. Like, and that's another even, reason like, why pivoting, you can't, I mean, you can with the mouse if you're aiming, it's you have the freedom. But if you're running and you want to turn around, you get your character to fully turn around. He kind of plants one foot and then kind of like slowly swings around. And I could see that. Yeah. Yeah. And some people say it's it's realism. Like it's, oh, well, that's how people actually move. But I think it's just a way of dumbing down the physics so that it'll run on a console. My only complaint is, uh, once again, there's not enough parachuting. Because sometimes you get in a plane and you think you have a parachute and you jump out of that thing. And lo and behold, you don't have a parachute on it and you just die. I feel like every person needs to have a parachute at every moment in that game. 
if you're going to play an arcade game, there's there better be a parachute on your back. I'm sick of them having any terrestrial gameplay. I mean, why can't the whole thing just happen in the air? Give me a, a parachute and maybe like some little jets on my shoes, like little jetpack oh, shoes yeah. <laughs> and a parachute so that I can climb if I or if I really want to climb. The best thing about the game are its sandbox elements. I mean, it's a true sandbox, and it's been a true sandbox since since GTA 2. I mean, I don't know what GTA 1 was like, but it's a solid sandbox. I really like that aspect of it. It's too bad they don't have... Uh, well, I guess that's what the modding was. If it could be truly like Gary's mod, but also GTA where you could spawn people and kind of move some buildings around or build things. That'd be, that'd be a super fun. Well, yeah. How many hot dogs does everybody give it? One out of 10, 10 being it's incredible. One being it's, it's miserably bad. It's just bad. Seven, seven doggies. In this podcast episode. <laughs> no. Two. <laughs> Two. Three. Oh. Ouch. Uh. Um, for me, I would give it a two. A two? Oh boy. Ten slash two. I'm I'm with the uh, gimmick. I'd give it a seven. It's fun. It's but it's not enough to hold me for a really long, long, long time. And for something to get a, a good review. I need to be hooked on it more than just a couple weeks. Unless it's unless it's a story game. If it's a story game and like I beat the whole story, it could get a 10. Like The Last of Us, the zombie game on the PlayStation, 10. And Well, we we it is a story game. <laughs> you forget that GTA I, Online's right. like a secondary element to the actual game which has got like 10 out of 10 on every website imaginable. So this is true. We're only really reviewing the online portion. I've only played the very first quest in the solo part, and only because it made me do it. Yeah, I haven't. Pl- I've uh, I played past that, but not f- very far. I just don't. Single player games just don't hold my attention. Um, it takes a real special one to hold my attention over, like a multiplayer. To truly grab think. your heart. Truly grab my heart. But yeah, I think it's yeah, I think it's uh, it's it's awesome. It's an amazing game, and it's kind of in a category of its own because it's I don't know, it's GTA. We look forward to the next one. Well, it's been short and sweet and slightly crazy, but uh, this is episode four, GTA Five. You should get it, buy it. It's only it's only sixty dollars still. After all these years, yeah, yeah. There's like, yeah, it's that same rock star. They're milking it. Kind of, kind of shady. I mean, you don't want to say they're asking for hackers, but they're kind of asking for hackers. But it works. I mean, I just bought it a month or two ago, and uh, I paid full price. I jokes think on I, you. Jokes on me. Okay, final words. That's a scrap. Ooh. Harsh. Uh, my computer crashed in the middle of this episode, and it's got me real down. So I don't have anything yeah. funny to say. You I've know? barely been able Just to hear worried. anybody in the, for the past, like, five to ten minutes. I've been barely able to hear you guys. It's a real full circle. It started melancholy, it's ended melancholy, and my foot is still bleeding. Goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.